Ask the Expert, Naloxone 101 with Dr. Alexander Wally. What is naloxone? Naloxone is a medication that can be given as a nasal spray or injected into the muscle, under the skin, or into the veins. Naloxone administration reverses an overdose if administered in time. And time is a very important factor with naloxone administration, especially in the setting of fentanyl. It used to be that we had uh, minutes to hours to administer naloxone and it could still be in time after somebody used uh, an opioid like heroin or oxycodone. But with fentanyl, we really need to administer naloxone within seconds to minutes after they take the drug that's causing the overdose, if it's fentanyl. And so it's really important to have naloxone at the scene of an overdose and for it to be administered as soon as that overdose starts. Naloxone is now available over the counter um, in your retail pharmacy and other places. Together, we have naloxone and overdose prevention education. We call it overdose education and naloxone distribution. That is one of our evidence-based practices. It empowers trainees to respond to overdoses and can be successfully implemented in multiple venues among diverse populations. The history of naloxone. So there's a history to um, naloxone distribution and overdose education. Naloxone as a medication was synthesized for the first time in 1961 uh, and was approved by the FDA to reverse opioid overdose. For the next 30 years, it was largely only used in medical settings or in emergency settings like uh, through ambulances. But in 1996, the Chicago Recovery Alliance, which is a harm reduction organization in Chicago that works with and among people who use drugs, began distributing naloxone directly to their, uh, to their uh, community, beginning the world's first coordinated naloxone distribution program this effort uh, was really underground and many people thought uh, illegal, but over the next 20 years became really mainstream. Um, it's been the cornerstone of overdose prevention, harm reduction, and people have reported using naloxone to revive friends, peers, partners, bystanders, neighbors, and family members. And now naloxone is a key part of the overdose reduction strategies of most public health and health organizations, including the World Health Organization, the Department of Health and Human Services, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration, and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. So it's very mainstream. It's part of our nation's um, drug control strategy to reduce the harms of overdose. Addressing naloxone myths. Now there's some concern and what has developed into myths that I wanna address head on. These myths fit into the area of what is called risk compensation and moral hazard. There's many examples of this that we've seen in the past that have been debunked. The idea that seatbelt laws make car crashes worse. Of course, we know that seatbelts save lives. That's been shown. There's been arguments that vaccination and condom distributions increase sexually transmitted infections when, of course, we know from the evidence from multiple studies and multiple venues that those things reduce sexually transmitted infections. And then with syringe distribution, there are people who believe that if you distribute syringes, you're gonna actually increase HIV infection when we know over and over again that when in communities where we distribute syringes, HIV infections go down. Well, this, in each of these cases, you can think of the, these things being fire extinguishers. And the question that people ask when they're asking, does naloxone increase drug use? It's effectively like asking, does a fire extinguisher cause fires? Well, a fire extinguisher does not cause fires and naloxone does not increase drug use. This has looked, been looked at in multiple studies, including a meta-analysis, um, and the results of the meta-analysis were that we found no evidence that take-home naloxone was associated with increased opioid use or overdose. Concerns that take-home naloxone may lead to increased substance use were not supported by data from the reviewed studies. Types of naloxone distribution. Active overdose education and naloxone distribution, or OEND, increases naloxone distribution for high-risk populations. Their social networks and venues where high-risk populations can be found. Examples include distributing naloxone at syringe service programs, 
in criminal legal settings and through peer outreach. And then there is passive naloxone distribution, which increased naloxone access to individuals referred by other providers or those seeking OEND on their own, like at a pharmacy, and naloxone for immediate use in overdose hotspots. Examples of this was making naloxone available in retail pharmacies. Naloxone boxes, which is posting naloxone in areas where overdoses are likely to occur. And then thirdly, naloxone administration increases the capacity for opioid overdose response and rescue by first responders. This resource is brought to you by the Healing Community Study, 